Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory be to Yahweh. Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem Rakha Kodash. And I want to say double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone on the root well. Blessings to the hopeful elect out there. Teaching this word in sincerity and truth. In the hopes that we may edify and feed the lambs of Yahweh Shai, especially in these last days. And um, pretty much what I wanted to do is um, a lesson <clears throat> on these um, on on this article here, put up by the Sun. Um, pretty much detailing the event that happened uh, recently, where you had this, um, you know, this um, this dog, this XL bully, as they call it, um, pretty much attacked this ten year old and basically took her out, man. You know, and um, what you got to understand is, is that the Lord is putting the spirit on certain of these animals to really, you know, to really turn up the heat and um, pretty much take people out. All right. And when I say the most High is doing that, I mean, what you got to understand is, is that, you know, the, the issues from death belong to the Lord. All right. There's a scripture that even speaks about that. I think it's Deuteronomy, I don't say 32. And um, he's 32 and 39, is it? It says, see now that even I am he. Right, even I, the I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. All right, so the Lord is the one that, you know, pretty much sanctions the death of individuals out here. Whether you want to believe it or not, the scriptures speak about whether, you know, they will hear or whether they will forbear. You know, like, you see, we got the truth, man. We understand that, um, you know, when there's a, fa a family pet that, that goes rogue <laughs> and pretty much um, turns on the child in the household or, the, or the, you know, the owners, you know, that's the spirit of the Lord, man. Okay, um, you know, because animals can get possessed, you know, um, you know, the scriptures tell you that, um, even during uh, the time of Mark, the fifth chapter, the time of Yahweh Shai, um, with the example with the swine, okay, you can get unclean spirits that can jump onto animals, all right, and the, you know, this is a spiritual warfare. That we're fighting indeed it is um, just put in some scriptures up excuse me so this is ephesians chapter 6 verse um verse 10 it says finally my brethren be strong in the lord and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of your that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So there are there are powers at work. You know there there are you know spirits. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. There are constantly things happening, you know, behind the scenes that are constantly working. The angels on the right hand side and the left hand side. You know the council in the heavens. You've got ways. You know, being pretty much drawn up. You know, instructions being given from the throne on how these angels are going to come down and do the bidding of the Lord. All right, and that includes putting people to death. Okay, because a lot of you guys don't even understand. You want to talk about the good books? You got these these guys that don't understand about. You know, in Ezekiel two and nine, it says. And when I looked and behold, and Hamas said unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein, which is the scriptures. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without, and it was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. So the lamentations, mournings and woe, you know, um, these, these so-called random events are part of that. Right? So this is the article was put up. 4th of November 2024, right? It says, Mom's agony. Mom screamed. That's a lamentation. 
that's a moment of woe that that mom had to go through. She was in agony, right? My baby is dead. My baby's dead. As girl, 10 years old, killed by XL Bully weeks after excitedly telling friends about her new pet. You know? So she was telling her friends about her new pet for weeks. And then all of a sudden, this new pet just turned around and just, just pretty much took the girl out. It says the young girl named Savannah had been excitedly telling pals about her new pet before it suddenly turned on her in the family caravan on Friday afternoon. You know? And this is the thing, like, when you go back into the, you know, into the book of Genesis, um, the first chapter, you know, the scriptures speak about in the beginning how the powers, you've got the word God there, the, the word is Allah Hayyam, created the heaven and the earth. Right? The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. So it was in this element stage, it was without form. You know? Like you got lithium, helium, hydrogen, oxygen, all these elements. You know, you bring O2 and, and, and you know, hydrogen and oxygen together, you get H2O, water. You freeze it, it becomes a solid. You, you know, then you melt it, it becomes a gas, back to its natural form. You know, it says, and the spirit of of the powers moved upon the face of the waters. All right, the Shemayim. Right, Shemayim means pertaining to the waters. Okay, and the power said, let there be light. And there was light, you know. And, you know, everything, you know, all these elements, like everything has an aura to it, man. I remember Elder Apostle Taha doing a video on this way back. You know, and, um, you know, certain certain elements were illuminated or are illuminated more than others. Everything has an aura to it. But going to the point, this is um, uh, verse 26. And the power said, all right, and why am I saying the powers? Because when you go into this, into this book, even in the book of Genesis, man, it, you know, it goes, it goes pretty deep, man, to the point where this is the creation of what you see around us. Like, you know, all the elements coming together, being having a form, the, the powers, Yahweh Shai and the angels were in the beginning doing that. Okay, in fact, let's go to John 101. And, you know, it proves that in John 101. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with the power, and the word was a power. All right, and the word is talking about who? Yahweh Shai. Is it not written that, lo, I come in a volume of the book, it is written of, of me? So the Lord comes in the volume of the book. He is the word. And proving that, go to verse 14. It says, and the word was made flesh and, and dwelt among us. That's talking about Yahweh Shai, the one that the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, which I hate saying that because his name couldn't have been J because J, the letter J only came around in the um, 1500s. All right, by Gian Trusino. All right, so the, the letter J could not have existed, man, back during the time of Yahweh Shai. And even going back to the time of Yahweh Shai, they would have been saying, Iesus Christos, all right, which is in the Greek. All right, because the letter J, why would they be saying Iesus? Because the letter J didn't exist back then. But the scriptures say, tell you that it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, all right, which the word is Yahawadah which is the head tribe of the nation of Israel, which are Hebrew. He's a Hebrew Israelite. So if the Lord is a Hebrew, he didn't have a Greek name. Like, that's disrespectful. If you say your name is um, Tony, but then someone calls you, you know, a different name because it's a different language. No, you don't change my name. My name is my name. Regardless of, you know, what, what country you fly to, your name is still your name. Regardless of what language people are speaking, your name is still your name. And it's the same thing with our Lord and Savior, whose name is Yahweh Shai. Okay? So it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of Him and cried, saying, This was He of whom I spake. He that come out, uh, he that come out after me is preferred before me, for He was before me. And of his fullness have we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Yahweh Shai and Mashayat. 
So it's talking about Yahweh Shai, man. The word that was made flesh and dwelt among us is talking about Yahweh Shai. So in, in the beginning was the word. All right. So let's go back to uh, uh, Genesis 1 and 26. It says, and the powers, okay, so that would be Yahweh Shai and the angels. Okay. The word there for God in the Hebrew is Alahayim, which means the powers. Right? Said, let us make man in our image. All right? After our likeness. Basically, give them order. All right? And let them have dominion over the fish. Right? And of the sea and over the fowl of the air. And over the cattle. And over all the earth. And over every creeper thing that creepeth upon the earth. Okay, so pretty much when you deal with these animals, going back to the lesson, or the core nature of the lesson, dealing with these animals now, you know, these animals, they, um, they had instincts, you know, but man was created to have, you know, dominion over the air, you know, the, the fowls of the air, the cattle, you know, and at one time they feared, they feared man. All right, let's go to Genesis 9 and 2 to speak about that. Right, and this is exactly how Noah was able to get them animals on the ark. All right, let's go to verse one. It says, "And Yahweh blessed Noah and his sons, and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth." All right, so everyone comes from you know the sons of Noah. Okay. It says, "And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth, and upon every fowl of the air, and upon." All that moveth upon the earth and upon the, all the fishes of the sea into your hand are they delivered. You see that? So, you know, knowing what animals to eat, what animals not to eat, you know, pretty much, you know, the fear and the dread was, was supposed to be upon every beast of the earth. You know, they were supposed to, you know, fear us. But now, you know, we're in a time now where that's not happening, you know. The Lord has pretty much removed that order, you know, to the point now where animals are now turning on, turning on people, you know, you know, it might be your, you know, your, your 10 year old bragging to her friends about this new pet of hers, but then all of a sudden that, that pet, it will turn around and just take them out because the fear and the dread is not there. Okay. Because ultimately, the Lord, we're in a time of judgment. The Lord is putting the spirit now on these animals to um, start tearing people up. This is Sirach chapter 29, sorry, 39 verse 28. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In a time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Right? So there were particular spirits that are created for vengeance, man which in their fury, they lay on them sore strokes. All right? And they're given instructions to do so by the Lord. Right? It says, fire and hell and famine and death, all these were created for vengeance. All of these are created for vengeance, man. Right? Even, even methods of death, whatever method of death, like you think about movies like Final Destination, there's many ways for people, for people to be put to death they were all created for vengeance and these ways that a man is going to be put put down is being discussed in the heavenly realm and that's why the fear of the lord you know needs to be maintained man especially when you come into this truth and this knowledge it's like it's understanding that the lord can have you get taken get you put into some situations out here you know that you you just wish you never got introduced to man you know some real fearful situations and people take this for granted the fact that they can just walk around walk around and breathe in the common air. Which even the air you're breathing is polluted and tainted. Got forever chemicals and chemtrails and all kinds of heavy metals that were being that are being ingested and so on and so forth. We need to get out of this place, man. It says teeth of wild beasts and scorpions and serpents and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. And notice it's a teeth of wild beasts. Now these the teeth of this particular wild beast there I don't know if this is the actual beast that did it to the girl. It was just a picture of the type of dog. The XL bully. <laughs> yeah, the XL bully, you know. But the teeth of this 
while Beast clamped down on this 10 year old and put her to death man why because that's a part of that's a part of that judgment it says teeth of wild beasts and he's always like oh she's only 10 years old it's good to tell you whoever perished being innocent like we can't get caught up in emotions man this is what I'm saying like the lamentations warnings and woes of the scriptures like Ezekiel 9 and 4 will tell you you know um, you know what's going on out here in regards to these little um, little people Right? Ezekiel 9 and 4 says, And the Lord said unto him, The Lord Yahweh said unto him, Go through the midst of the city <clears throat> and through the midst of Jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And that uh, word mark in the Hebrew is Dawa, which means an exemption from judgment. Okay? So all of those that have the mark of exemption from judgment, pretty much the Lord is like, Yo, when the time is come, for all out, you know, all kinds of judgment to be played out on the earth. Especially when the shit hits the fan. Um, the Lord is going to say to the angels, look, those that have the mark on them, just leave them alone. You know? Now, this is, this is deep stuff to know and to believe in. Um, the average person that's of a carnal mind state, they ain't, they ain't believing in what we're saying, man. They don't have faith that, you know, the angels or the Lord encampeth about them that fear him and delivereth them. They don't have faith in them scriptures there. Psalms 34 and 7 tells, tells you that clearly. But you see, this word is not going to profit you unless it's mixed with faith. Hebrews 4 and 2 tells you that. Right? It said unto the others, he said in mine here, and go ye after him through the sea and smite. Right? Which means to kill. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Don't have no pity, man. You know, don't show no mercy. And there's going to come a time where, where the angels are going to be given a charge to pretty much not have any pity. You know, and they're going to be given the license to just do whatever they need to do. And what does it say in the next verse? It says, slay utterly, old and young, both maids and little children and women and little children, man. Now, you know, you might be saying, well, I was just a little child and you might be getting emotional and stuff, but... Guess what? The Lord, you know, put the spirit upon this particular beast, you know, to sink its teeth into this 10 year old. Yeah. A local witness told the male that the very big XL bully was certified and well behaved. He said the mother ran out from the static caravan screaming, my baby's dead. Some people from the caravan site went to help. She was obviously really distraught. The police got there very fast. There were two helicopters and ambulance turned up and an armed response unit. Someone put the dog in the car, apparently. <laughs> a local farmer described the tragic youngster as a really, a really polite girl and a lovely little lass. <laughs> well, you know, there's going to be a lot more lovely little lassies that are going to be taken out. And, um, you know, we just had to give you the message that that was an order from the throne. Okay, to slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But he goes on to say in verse six, "But come not near any man. Come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary." And they began at the ancient men which were before the house. Let me read this in the NLT. Right, verse six it says, "Kill them all, old and young, girls and women and little children." But don't touch anyone with the mark, the Dawa, which is the exemption from judgment. Begin right here at the temple. So they began killing, uh, killing the 70 leaders. All right. So what you got to understand is, is I want to focus on the first part of this, this verse in the NLT. Kill them all, old and young, girls and women and little children. It's very straight up and plain to understand. And yeah, these scriptures are biblical. They're in the Bible. Okay, see the Bible, man, like when you read it for what it is and you really understand like how, how you know, um, how serious or, the, or the, you know, how serious the message is or how, how weighty the message is that the prophets are carrying and, and are letting you know, look, you Israelites out there, you don't even understand what you're dealing with, man. Like, we're not in a time of, of peace. We're in a time of war. We're in a time of 
civil unrest. We're in a time of, you know, beasts devouring people. We're in a time of judgment. You know what I'm saying? So we have to be very, very circumspect in these last days, man. Okay? Because things are going to get even worse. You know, the XL bully is... <laughs> ain't, ain't nothing compared to what's coming. This is Jeremiah 15 and 3. And I will appoint over them four kinds, saith the Lord, Yahweh. The sword to slay, the dogs and the dogs to tear. This is a dog that was appointed to tear, man. All right? This is actually in the Bible. This is biblical. The Lord said he would appoint the dogs to tear. Right? And the fowls of heaven and the beasts of the earth to devour and destroy. And the fowls of heaven, you know, the Lord's promised the fowls a feast. You know? And they're going to be feasting on these dead bodies, especially when people get put to death, left, right and center out here. What do you think the fowls of heaven are going to be doing? These carnivorous fowls. They're going to be swooping down these vultures, these ravens. They're going to be swooping down and plucking out eyeballs, man. Like they show you in, in movies where a great war was fought, like ancient, um, or movies depicted in the ancient world, like Kingdom of Heaven, after a battle and all the corpses are on the floor and the ravens are just plucking out the corpses, innards, intestines, eyeballs, you name it. The Lord has promised them a feast. And I will, call, you know, so this is the time that we're in. Okay, so um, that's it. I'm going to leave it there because I've got to head out to work. Um, but these these kind of events are going to start happening more and more. All right, it ain't over. Um, so with that, man, I pray you edify to the next time. Shalom to the elect.